Hi there, Simon from SimonWoods.com. Uh, I have four Syrahs Stroke, or Stroke, depending on which way you're looking at the camera. Uh, Shiraz is in front of me, and I have no idea whether I've got them in the right order. Uh, I have The order I have got, well, it goes both alcohol-wise, so I've got one at 13.5%, and then three at 14.5%. Uh, but vintages, I've got uh, 10, 9, 8, 7. But it means that uh, country-wise, I'm going Chile, Australia, Australia, New Zealand. I thought New Zealand was cool climate. Maybe it is. Maybe it's not. Um, there's only one way to find out. Let's dig in. Um, so the first one I've got is uh, Irazari's uh, Sira Single Vineyard 2010 uh, from Aconcagua Costa. Uh, now, uh, Aconcagua region, where Irazari is, it's their homeland. It's where they've got uh, most, of the, most of their famous wines have originated. Uh, but there, that bit is uh, around near a place called Pankewe. Wonderful name. Uh, they don't make pancakes. Maybe they do make pancakes there. But it's uh, quite a way inland, away from the coast, and it's pretty warm. And they, they have grown sh uh, Sira stroke Shiraz there. Um, but now they've got these coastal plantings, the idea being closer you are to the Pacific Ocean, the cooler it is. Uh, maybe that's why it's the coolest, they, they're lowest in alcohol here, uh, or maybe they picked it early, maybe, only one way to find out, let's have a taste. Well, it may be the lowest in alcohol, but it feels like it's a big, thick, ruddy monster. Um, it's got that, uh, what I call the classic Chilean reduced black currant pastel character that um, can stand out a bit like a sore thumb. Uh, but here, there's, it's joined by a few more herbal, um, sage, sausage meat, uh, wild berry, funky type of aromas. Um, I, uh, my concern is that that, uh, that, uh, that band of reduced blackcurrant parcel will stay with it throughout its life and will not diminish and those other characters maybe uh, will never get a chance to shine. Uh, but let's taste it and see whether they do. You know, I really can't work that out. Um, it's got, um, much like uh, uh, the, the smell was, it's got bits of it that I like. So I like that, uh, that uh, herbal sausage meat, fennel, bit of lavender, sage, uh, that type of, of wild character. Uh, but then it's got this rather thoddy core um, of uh, someone who... Um, has made a good wine, but has maybe then wanted to buff it up just a little too much, uh, and has, uh, in the process, has got to, has uh, slightly dampened down the wildness that was there. Uh, it feels it feels very safe, um, and uh, it, that's a problem with it, with, I've had with quite a lot of Irazari's wines. As uh, can't fault the way, uh, can't fault them for cleanliness and uh, depth of fruit, uh, but it maybe it feels like the the guy who's made them has got a few too many creases in his jeans. Um, here, um, yeah, so it feels like they they are getting something nice from the terroir, but um, I'd like to see it in the hands of a different winemaker, someone who's got a bit more, a few more warts. And the finish is just a little bit too dry, as if, um, yeah, again, as if someone has thought, oh, I just need to correct this, I just need to do that, I just need to, um, yeah, could do with a little more hands off. Um, next one, so we're in Australia now, uh, and in the Clare Valley, uh, actually it's Clare Valley plus McLaren Vale, uh, for Wakefield's uh, Jaraman, Yaraman, my name is Yaraman, me live in a van, me like to eat Shiraz out of a pan, um, but vintage 2009, um, and it uh, doesn't say how much of each um, proportion is in there, but give it a whirl. And in the way that the first one was classically Chilean, this one is classically Australian. Um, it's got the minty eucalyptus. Uh, it's got that, uh, I don't know whether they've added a little bit of tannin here and, and got that type of, um, uh, of added tann tannin character. I can't put it any other way. Um, there, uh, and then in terms of élevage, it feels like they've, uh, they've done it. Some of it is in an, in an American oak, so that's giving this coconutty sheen. Um, it, again, it feels like it's going to be a very concentrated wine, but I'm just wondering whether, uh, again, there was a better wine to be made from the grapes uh, by a different winemaker. And it is a big, rich, honest, hearty, bear hug-like wine. Lots of licorice, lots of berries. Uh, can't fault it for intensity, but... Um, feels a bit like last year's wine. Um, uh, there's... Uh, I. I I don't know, I've, mo I've moved on from uh, power is everything. I want a little bit more freshness. I want a little bit more finesse in my wines. Uh, I'd almost like uh, a little bit of that um, uh, more garrigi. I know Australia doesn't have garrigi. It has a different sort of uh, uh, character that comes from the soil into its wine. But uh, yeah, some of that lavender and sage that was in the first one uh, would be welcome here. Um, as I say, I can't fault it for that style. But um, it's just, that style was... Um, well, maybe, I, I, I've moved on, maybe uh, some people still love that. 
Um, next one, again, still in Australia, but in a different state. We're in the state of, of Victoria now. I'm not sure whereabouts in Victoria, it just says Victoria. Uh, the Grampians. It says, actually, it says Grampians on the press label, but not on the back label. It just says Victoria. But it's Mountain Langi Giraz, uh, and it's not their top wine, but it's their Billy Billy Shiraz 2008. And if I sang for that one, maybe I ought to do a, so a song with the undertones. Billy Billy, do 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 do, Billy Billy, whoa. I know it was Jimmy Jimmy. Don't keep the fan mail away. But uh, anyway, let's try the wine. Well, uh, Mount Langi Duran uh, was one of the Shiraz pioneers, uh, I think in probably, uh, I don't know if they were going in the 70s, but certainly uh, early 80s, they were one of the ones that got uh, that cooler peppery edge into uh, into Australian Shiraz, and there, there were quite a few other around them, I mean, I think about uh, Dalwini, Balgauni, Chateau Lehman, uh, the bit further south, Craigley, people like that. Um, but um, here, there is a little bit of that uh, that that, that, uh, that black pepper. Uh, but uh, maybe the fruit round it has got a bit is a bit more buxom. So it feels like there's I don't know if it's a blend of fruit, but it feels like there's a a cool fragrant bit and then a round warm bit. I almost wish they'd had more of the cool fragrant bit. Because that round, warm bit is tending to just dominate, give it a, 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 a bit too much rounded softness for me. Again, lots of people will love that, uh, and I, uh, for exactly the same reasons that I'm thinking, I want something a little bit, uh, a little bit more sleek and slender. Um, but anyway, let's taste it. And if the first one was on the um, uh, eucalyptus side uh, of mint, this is on the minty side of mint, not over the top minty. Uh, there is a juicy, slight, almost a little leathery character coming through there. Very ripe fruit, berries, plums, damsons. Uh, but um, the finish I'm left with is just slightly too broad for, for my liking. Can't fault it as a nice, friendly, gentle wine. But um, as I have said on previous ones, I'd like a little bit more finesse and uh, a few more high cheekbones. Maybe I'll get them in the last one, which is uh, from New Zealand, uh, and it's John Forest Collection 2007 uh, Syrah from the Gimlet Gravels in Hawke's Bay. Well, this is uncurling in a very interesting way. I, first time I sniffed it, I thought, where's the wine gone? And now, suddenly, things are coming out. First thing I got was this, um, what I call the smoky bacon oak. It almost feels like someone's got a... Um, uh, a uh, what are they called? Rancheros? Do they still make rancheros? Bacon fries, those type of slightly artificial bacon flavoured sweets. And uh, uh, and uh, distilled some of that essence and blonked it into the wine. Uh, I, that's a character that I get from certain types of oak. Uh, but the, the weird thing is that bacon fat, um, smoky character can... Uh, can also come come through in Syrah uh, in other parts of the world. Certainly some of, you find it in some bits of the Northern Road. Then... This is dark fruit intensity. Uh, not, it feels, still feels like pretty brooding. I mean, it's been under a screw cap, so maybe it just needs a little bit more time to blossom. But then so had the previous two, and uh, uh, and they didn't uh, have, a, have a problem jumping out of the glass. But here it feels like it, it's going to be, it's going to have intensity, but it's, maybe it's going to have a little bit more subtlety. It doesn't feel like it's trying to assault you with over-the-top ripeness. So it feels like the fruit is ripe, but not bordering on the jammy as maybe we've had in the previous two. I'm really not sure about that one. Um, I find it, uh, it it's um, not too intense, um, but uh, that smoky bacon oak character, I think it, most of it's to do with oak, uh, is just tending to dominate the wine at the moment. Uh, behind it, yes, there's a little bit of black pepper, um, but there's this, um, also this, it, it, it feels like some of the fruit has been left out that little bit too long and has started to raisin. It's not turned jammy, but it's, ter it's started to shrivel up and uh, you're getting these baked flavours. Um, uh, of all the wines that I'd like to see what they would be like tomorrow, uh, I think the middle two will be uh, pretty much as they are now. They're sort of like going to be big, on, honest, friend, friendly sort of beaming wines. Um, it's the first and the last. Um, I'm not sure whether that Chilean character will ever disappear from the first one. Uh, I'm not sure, as in the Chilean reduced black current uh, character, and I'm not, sh I'm not sure whether that... Um, uh, whether that baked fruit and that smoky bacon oak will ever recede from this one and let uh, the wine that's underneath shine. But um, I'm going to give them a chance. I'm, I'll, uh, I'll report back. You can have a look. Go on, go on the, uh, my website uh, and uh, see how I got on with them at a later date. Because, uh, yeah, sometimes the wines change, but... Um, 
Uh, I suppose if you've been doing this long enough, you, you have a reasonable amount of confidence in your first opinion. If you ever think you're 100% confident, then you need a slap round the head. Uh, so, but I'm reasonably confident that, uh, uh, that uh, come tomorrow, the forest will be a bit better, but I don't know. I, I still don't think it's going to be a great wine, but um, I'm very willing to be proved wrong. See you soon.